Never pass up a chance to shoot the gimmer. <laughs> Come on over to the fire. I'll show you what we're doing today. Oh, there we go. Let's find a spot for this. Hey guys, Buckskin Dave here. Uh, a little coffee here. Uh, welcome to my new set. <laughs> Finally got cold enough around here that and wet enough I could actually start a fire out here. Uh, of course now I got the smoke to contend with which you know it'll chase me around. Anyway uh, I haven't been uh, posting for about the last month and a half and it's been for a variety of reasons. I've been trying to do a little trapping, trying to do a little hunting. This uh, weather really, and look at it right now. I mean, it's almost 40 degrees, and uh, it's November 20th, and there's just a little bit of snow. And actually, up until yesterday and the day before, this snow was gone. We had 75 and 80 degree afternoons up until about a week and a half ago. Then we got whacked with snowstorm after snowstorm. It ran me and my traps out of the high country. Um, and then it rained for two days, went away, and then just put this down the uh, night before last. So really the hunting has been not very good for anybody. Uh, elk never really came out of the high country down to the fields and I had to shoot one within a mile of the fields uh, for the tag I have. However, uh, next week my muzzleloader elk season opens and the weather's starting to look good. Hopefully it'll get nice and cold and uh, and not too much more snow, just a little bit um, so we can get up into the hills and uh, I can go anywhere with my muzzleloader and shoot a cow. So what I'm going to do today is get my 58 cal up for the task. I need to make a I need to make a uh, a loading block because all my guns are 54 and uh, put together my kit so that uh, I have everything for five or six shots to pack off uh, into the woods and uh, go look for an elk so we're gonna do a little shooting um, stick around the coffee's getting hot and uh, welcome back so stick around let's shoot some guns one of the things I have to make for that excuse me 58 is a loading block. I'm not trying to make a job out of this, but using this keeps me from. I was using a hand drill for the first one. Push through when it breaks through, and it's chipping out edges. So I just went ahead and set it up in here. It's actually a lot easier. The funny thing about working with hand tools is all the while you're sitting here doing this tedious task, you think, there's got to be a faster way to do it. <laughs> well, when you're working with muzzle loaders and building antique stuff and working with old way stuff, you can't think like that because if you think like that, you'll just reinvent what we have now to do it with machines and that just blows the whole point this deal here I can just have this in my pocket <clears throat> with six rounds a small flask or, or a small vial to dump my powder push this in and then I always have primers hanging off the gun or or a capper in my pocket so anyway I'm gonna work on this it's gonna be simple I think most of the stuff that the even the long hunters and and the mountain men made were simple I'm going to play pigeon and see what we can do here. It looks like I need some practice with that. <laughs> I haven't shot this thing in a while, so we're going to keep loading it until I get the right hold on that. Um, this does shoot a little bit high, so I'm going to have to pick. There we go. Like I punched a hole right through it. <laughs> now we got her. So I'm going to shoot a little bit more, and I'm trying to get my 
my accoutrements together and uh, I mean I have a capper that I can go in my pocket and I have uh, I have a, uh, a, a small flask and a, and a loader, you know, a, a charger that's 80 grains. All I really need, it, it's, those things are right there. I can have them hanging off the front of me. I need a loading block because digging around in that ball bag and, and stuff like that and trying to get a patch and all that together, that, that eats up time. And, uh, yeah, so... These things work good. You stick them in the ground, you know, put a clay bird on them. And uh, you got another target. It's one problem with these. If you hit this, then you don't have a target stand anymore. There's our, our ball uh, block. So I have, and this stuff will probably end up on my, around my neck, but I have my powder measure and then a small flask that'll go in my pocket and my 80 grains so put our 80 grains in okay Get that out of our way now this is my uh, short starter, but it also is a 50 grain powder measure right here. And it's really nice because um, if I'm shooting targets, I usually just shoot 50 grains. But it wouldn't hurt to, you know, when it's cold or whatever, 100 grains of, of black powder isn't gonna, isn't gonna change much, and it might give it a little more oomph. But now, instead of fumbling around in that load, or in that uh, ball bag, okay, We go like that, <laughs> and we got it going. So that's a whole lot easier, and I can carry that one has six holes, so I can carry six shots in my pockets with me. And uh, I'm still going to have a, a pouch, you know, with extra stuff and fire starting and, and kit and all that kind of stuff. But just for walking around in the woods for quick reloads, this is what I'm going to have in my pocket. Good, first time. <laughs> and it don't look like I hit the plastic thing. That's always a plus. So, she's a shooting pretty good. Uh, I'm going to have to put my hunting jacket on or my capote or whatever I'm wearing when I'm hunting and then kind of line out. I like to have stuff, if I'm sitting, if I'm like this, okay, when I load I go like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is put powder in. I'm going to hold it up with this hand. So my powder is going to be on this side. I can lean it, pour it into a thing, dump it, and then same thing with my loading block boom my deals on there or if it's here always have time to stop for a cup of black rifle coffee one of the lubes that I, I get a lot of people ask me what kind of lube I use and this and that and I mean I've used everything from spit patch to uh, a ballistol or but this is what I really like this wonder lube and um, it, it's good for oil and everything and it's good for rust it's not it's uh, not a uh, hazardous material um, but it does get hard when it's cold so you have to you know, keep it on the dashboard in the truck or near the fire so that uh, it stays um, it stays soft. But I really like it. It coats the barrel. It kind of seasons the bore a little bit. At least that's what they claim, and it kind of feels like it does. And once you get a good slick bore.
from shooting a like this gun is still right, early. hundred yard gong. Here we go. I think we got her this time. There we go. And looks like it hit pretty close to center. A little to the left. Well, she's raring to go. She's on at 100 yards. Uh, we got her shooting at 25 yards. I know where it's hitting. It goes to show you these guns aren't just put them in your closet and then come out and use it and go hunting with it because it was working last year. You really shouldn't do that with a modern rifle. But with these, you got to shoot them. You got to shoot them on it because you kind of forget what your holds are at different distances. And so. And they're very um, sensitive to that. You got to put that hold right where you want it to get the ball to go to the uh, point of impact. Anyway, that's all I got this time. I'm Buck and Dave. Man, thanks for joining me. Uh, and I want all of you to stay safe, okay? And be on the lookout for the Rona. And, uh, and, and do whatever you got to do to protect yourself from it. Um, anyway, thanks for dropping in. I'll see you next time. Bye.